Hello and welcome into Pioneer Baseball with Pioneer coach Brandon Steele. The Tusculum Pioneers have positioned themselves nicely in the South Atlantic Conference as we head in to the postseason. Before we get there, we've got a lot of games to catch up on. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brian Staten, joined by Coach Brandon Steele. And the last time we talked, we were getting ready to head a get into a good stretch, I think, mm -hmm. for this uh, Pioneer team. Coker and Anderson were a couple of the, the conference teams that were coming up. Go four and six, or four and two, I suppose, out of those six games. Um, against those two teams. And I think maybe the mindset was we got to go in and we've got to get all six of them, I think, right. for some of the guys. Um, I guess you credit Coker and Anderson a little bit for rallying for, those, for some of those uh, third games. Some of the things that you saw out of your team that – I know we're not in a great stretch right now, mm -hmm. but some of the things out of those two conference weekends that you saw out of your team that you think – might be a very good benefit as you head into that conference tournament. Well, obviously, the, the energy and atmosphere when, when Friday comes around, everybody's excited yeah. to play because um, with the injuries that we have right now, everybody feels that's our best opportunity to win when, when Charles on the mound and, and obviously having a deep bullpen. And then on Saturdays, uh, Zach Sanders has given us some quality starts and give us an opportunity to compete as well. And then game three, when that starts rolling around, that's when we start having some questions with some injuries with, with Harvard Jeffrey yeah. now being out. Um, we're asking a lot of our bullpen to kind of pitch um, in starting roles and kind of try to feel out what the best role for some of those guys are is to kind of get through that game seven. And then when you face Coker, they threw their number one against us in a seven inning game, and he was pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's a testament to really our club for them to say, hey, the best chance for us to win is throw our best guy in game three. Um, so we took care of business in terms of winning the series, um, but still felt like there's some opportunities for us to win game three in both Anderson and Coker. And that's something that we've really struggled with this year in terms of finishing, yeah. uh, whether it's finishing the game, the inning, or the series. Um, if you look at a lot of our conference losses outside of Carson Newman, they're typically in game three. Right. Um, and that's something we have to get over, particularly this weekend coming up. It shows, though, a lot, I think, the depth in college baseball. You've got to have those three guys, you mm -hmm. know, in pitching. And when you're hit and decimated by the injury so much, I think some of your offense has to maybe step up and help. Yeah. Against the Anderson – in the Anderson series, you did see some of that offense. You really hit the ball well uh, in that one. Getting ran into a little bit of a uh, depletion of offense in mm -hmm. that third game. But even against Anderson, I think that you saw – I what I saw – outsider looking in, an offense that seems to be clicking, guys starting to be hitting the baseball really well at that point of the season. Yeah, and it's really a product of confidence. Um, you know, obviously early in the year when we were playing a non-conference schedule, we weren't seeing, uh, you know, the same level of pitching that we see in conference play. So we had some success early. We get into conference play, and we kind of dip down offensively a little bit. Yeah. And as weeks have gone by, we're starting to see that our, our in-conference numbers start to improve each week because it's re <laughs> excuse me, requiring us offensively to make adjustments yeah. and really lock in. Um, and as that has transferred over from week to week to week, um, outside of the last week with LMU, um, we're seeing the success. Yeah, you see that. With that, with that team during that stretch that was good. You see people like McDay kind of picking up that batting. Mm -hmm. I look at it saying who's, whose batting averages are going up and, mm -hmm. and who's doing what. Who is that one guy that seems to be excelling here right at the end of the year in that lineup and you need him to excel? Well, Jarrell's a great example. If you look at the way he was hitting early in the year versus yeah. his conference numbers, uh, there's a night and day difference and his batting average hasn't continued to, to climb. Um, getting a lot of Nate Montgomery right now in conference yeah. play in terms of productivity, getting guys across the plate. Uh, and even Zach Finch was, you know, had some big hits for us to give us an opportunity to win some games. And it's really going to come down to our, a functioning offense one through nine, which, you know, last time we met I talked about is we're going to have to get everybody to find a way to contribute. Um, get a wing for those stretches of three or four guys having a hole in the middle. And the bottom of our order has been more productive as of late. Mm -hmm. um, Wes Reynolds, who's found his way into the DH spot, has been very productive since he's been in that role as well. And, and kind of having him in the six, seven spots been a nice bridge from the middle to kind of the bottom third. You're seeing a lot of the guys come up with multiple hit games now, concession, consecutive hit games. Dalton Martin is a guy that's always done that, batting 392 for the team right now. Uh, it's 22 doubles, and again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that this weekend. Uh, could be a bit historic for him and what he has done, and just what he has done for his career at Tusculum mm -hmm. in, in the short amount of time that he's been here at the school already, um, and the numbers that he's been putting up. He's, he's kind of a guy that can get hot and stay hot, or even if he's not hot, can still lead the team. Yeah, and, and, and that's really the, the reason we put him in the one yeah. um, when we had Jaden go down is, uh, we really needed to try and get our best guy the most number of at-bats and, and 
at that point feeling like the bottom third was going to find a way they're on with, with Zach or with mm -hmm. Seth and give Martin an opportunity to drive some people in. And he's been tremendous since he's been on campus from a freshman to now being a junior. And, you know, having the opportunity to coach some of the players that he's now sharing records with, what he's been yeah. able to do is pretty impressive. And, and like I said, just as a junior doing the, the job. All right, but now it's been a tough stretch. Four of the last five we've dropped. Mm -hmm. King and Lee are some of the non-conference games, and then the LMU series. Right. Uh, and I think there was a lot of hype going into that one because I, you know, I know, that kids – get on social media, they chat it up, they look, they understand where they stand in their records and those mm -hmm. types of things. It's tough to say, let's take this game by game because kids see the big picture. Right. Uh, I, I don't know that the hype was too big, but LMU is a good team. They have a right. great pitching staff. And despite all the offense that your team had, uh, their, their staff proved why they were a pretty good team. Yeah, if you look at it really midweek standpoint from the, the Lee and, and the King games, and that's just a uh, – a product of having Harbor go down and having guys have a pitch on the fall. weekend and being a little bit thinner yeah. um, midweek. Um, we still were in position to win both of those games. Um, I felt like the King game, offensively, we kind of faltered a little bit and had some opportunities and didn't put guys across. I think we left probably 16 on that game. And then if you look at Lee this past weekend, uh, excuse me, this past week, you know, our offense did enough to kind of scratch along, but we gave them too many freebies. I think yeah. we walked 10 in that game. Uh, if we cut down the number of freebies, we probably win that game. Um, but it, it's been uh, frustrating for us because at some point in the game, our offense is either going to go through a lull or our pitching staff is going to give something away. And, you know, we continuously talk about how we have to make people earn for things and stay in the moment. And at times, as, as young men, they, they kind of lose focus, and we have to find ways to get them locked back in. And the same thing happened with LMU. Like you said, I'm sure there was that discussion internally about where we were positioned and what that series could mean for us if we had won it. Um, and then Charles and, and Ethan Elliott battling was a pretty fun game to watch. Yeah. And you have two premier pitchers going at it. And then uh, offensively, they jumped up to a 3 nothing lead, and, and Elliott was as good of a Friday guy I've seen in this league. He really just chewed us up. Um, and that's just a credit to him being a number one in this league since he was a freshman. I mean, he was, I think, 8-0 as a freshman in this league. And I think that kind of hurt us a little bit. Yeah. I think mentally we felt like we lost with Charles on the mound, and we kind of came back out on Saturday and found ourselves behind again. Um, and just we're not in a good place to be able to stay in the moment and focus, and we gave some bats away. But I will give the team a lot of credit for us to lose the first two and then come back in game three and be down 5 nothing yeah. uh, to come back and score seven unanswered runs to win that game and not get swept. We did lose the series, but we didn't get swept at home. Uh, which is something that's really important for us. Um, now has allowed us to stay in a good position moving to the conference tournament. You know, and that's what's funny about it. You went against the norm uh, in that game three. It shows a lot about your resolve, I think. Mm -hmm. But probably also the fact that because you've had to play a lot of these guys, get them in positions early, kind of build some of that depth, you get that game three win that you probably didn't expect. So you go a little bit against the norm, you know, and, and what does that say about the resolve from – a pitching staff that probably thought, well, it's game three, you know, yeah. I got to give it my best. Uh, I think that shows a lot about your team. Yeah, and I think really that we have more belief as a staff in, you know, our pitchers' abilities to go out there and compete for us, and sometimes they do. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got some kids that are talented, but I think the moment gets a little bit bigger than it really is in their mind at times, and they try to be too perfect. Um, and it, it kind of gets away from it. And then, you know, if you look at that game and also – um, Lee, the number of pitchers we ran out there. It was by yeah. design. We were just trying to piece it together bit by bit. And sometimes, you know, pitchers are creatures of habit. They want to know when they're starting, how many innings they're going, um, as opposed to just go out there until we come and get you. Um, so it's trying to get them to understand that because that's kind of where we're at right now is, is we're going to have to do whatever we have to to win game one and two on a weekend and then piece it together for game three, and everybody has to be ready to go. Yeah. Um, and for us to have success and go deep in the tournament or for any team to go deep in the tournament, you're going to have to have people step up on the mound and, and that's what we're hoping for. And Pioneer team trying to position themselves into the double elimination portion of the South Atlantic Conference Tournament. They've got one more weekend to go though. It's the Lenore Ryan Bears. And we'll talk about that when we return with more Pioneer Baseball with Brandon Steele after this. Ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota, where new Tacomas start at $309 a month with zero down. Drive the all-new RAV4 for $209 a month or save over $4,000 on Highlander. See more great deals at JohnsonCityToyota.com. 
We welcome you back into Pioneer Baseball with Coach Brandon Steele, the Pioneer team that falls to Lee this week, takes on the uh, Lincoln, the uh, Lenore Ryan Bears after their Lincoln Memorial University series just last weekend. So a Pioneer team that's positioned themselves right now in the top four. There's a lot of things that can happen. Newberry has put themselves in a very good position atop the table in the South Atlantic Conference. LMU is quick, is right there at them, but those two face each other this weekend and Catawba and Tusculum are kind of lurking uh, at number three and number four. Coach, you have to take care of business this weekend before we really get into the conference tournament. An LR team that's always dangerous, seems mm -hmm. like they always have pop in the bat. They've always got a guy that has, hits for a very high um, batting average. Uh, and, and a pitching staff that's sneaky good with mm -hmm. guys that have some good velocity and good pitching. The number one thing you have to take away and, and accomplish this weekend. Is just take care of the baseball. Um, make LR earn everything they get. If they put them all in play, we've got to be able to make sure we get outs. And also, again, what we alluded to with earlier with some of the, the struggles we've had is make them earn it. Um, yeah. For a team to, to score against us, we want them to have to swing their way across the plate, not walk their way. And if we can do those two things, I think we're going to have a really successful weekend. Um, you know, offensively, we're very opp opportunistic. If people give us freebies, we score. So our pitchers have to realize that. That on the flip side, if we give teams, you know, four or five outs yeah. an inning or a couple free base runners, they're going to come across the plate. So. Um, Charles will give us a good chance, and then we'll have a full bullpen for, for that game, and then Zach Sanders in game two, and then TBA for game three. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the talent, we've got the depth, it's just a matter of executing. And the fact that it's senior weekend at home with some um, tournament implications, um, we should be pretty, pretty excited. It's just a matter of being able to not get too overly excited and just be able to stay in the moment and execute. Is TBA becoming, though, a lot easier because of that you've had to go to TBA a lot earlier in the season? It is, um, and it's really just from a, a standpoint of looking at, you know, what we've had um, early in the weekend as far as who's going to be a better matchup yeah. to try and go out there. And, you know, Kent Noe started for us in game three a couple times, and, um, you know, Harbor w was that guy until he went down. Now we're just trying to figure out what's the best guy to give us a chance to start the first game based on who our opponent is. Um, so it could very well be somebody different, uh, but we anticipate that it's going to be a number of guys that have to go through there to give us a chance to win. And, you know, having some of the outings that we've had recently for, out of the bullpen, particularly from Andrew Willis, Mitch McCain, and yeah. um, against Lee, Carter and Linton, what he did, um, just adds to our depth and our confidence knowing that we have more guys to go to. But right now our focus is Friday and, and taking care of business Friday. And you, you get there, uh, again, the LR Bears has to be the, the focus. But then you talk about a conference tournament uh, and getting to that double elimination portion, I think, more – important getting there number one is there you've positioned yourself pretty much to be there you mm -hmm. still have to take care of business you still have to get one of these games um but to be there in that in that setting where you know you'll be around for a little bit longer obviously gives you a little bit more uh, time to breathe I, I think but just talk about the top eight as a whole because it seems as if there's been a little bit more parity when you look at newberry and lmu rising to right. the top nobody thought that would have happened right now was mm -hmm. supposed to be the king much parities in this league right now yeah and if you just look at it you know our losses in the league um, against coker against anderson against mars hill you have to really take care of business you can't take anybody for granted because everybody has the ability to beat you and the fact that you know uh Kitab got swept um i don't know the last time that happened in our yeah. league um and by a, a very good newberry team so i think there is a lot of parity like you said but there's also a lot of opportunity because there's some people positioned where, where they're not used to being yeah. and um, some teams are hungry. Um, and I think also the target that we had for us is to prove people wrong this year as far as where we were picked preseason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still have an opportunity as far as to maybe move up the board a little bit as far as our regular season standings if we're able to, to focus and, and execute this weekend. It's so Newberry, LMU, Catawba, Tusculum, Wingate, Lurking, Carson Newman, right there as well for this uh, pioneer team as you see the uh, the standings for the uh, south atlantic conference and again a lot of that has to just go back and take care of business and that's this weekend against the lenore ryan bears come out and join us it is senior weekend see charles hall throw friday night he'll start the series beginning at six o'clock that is good friday if you can check it out you can do that online through the uh, tusculumpioneers.com and the youtube channel and there is rain in the forecast for the weekend so the schedule may be just a little bit altered so just stay to the website to find out the latest uh, but obviously you know it's pioneer park so there's not going to be cancellation they're going to get these games in uh, to the best of their ability 
here this weekend. And it's the final weekend of the regular season as well. For all those behind the scenes here at Tusculum and the uh, Pioneer Sports Network, Nick Forsberg, Dom Donnelly, and Jim Miller, he's Brandon Steele, and I'm Brian Staten. And until next week, go Pioneers.